Hi, Jim here, and you're listening to the Honest Filmmaker podcast, career advice from people in the business. So this week, I'm going to be talking about sales and distribution. I've been through this process many times before. It's got a lot of pitfalls. It's not much fun. But these are my tips for finding a good sales agent and getting a good distribution deal, which is quite a feat. Okay, before I go into my tips, bit of a legal disclaimer just to say these are my own tips based on my own experience and should not be considered legal advice. So my first tip would be, if it's not too late for you, to think about this at the very beginning of the process. So when you're even conceiving of the idea that's going to be your feature or writing your script, sit down, take a look at it and figure out who it's being made for, who's your audience and how you're going to reach them. Then I potentially contact distributors or sales agents who deal with those type of movies. If you can get a sales agent or a distributor to hook up a deal with you before you make the film, you'll be in a really good position. You may even be able to get some money out of them up front. So you've finished your film, you've got your feature done, you're trying to work out where am I going to put it? Am I going to put it on an aggregator or am I going to give it to a sales agent to sell to distributors or am I going to sell to distributors direct? So first off, let's talk about sales agents. Now, sales agents don't get a great reputation when it comes to micro-budget film. There are some honest ones out there, but you really need to be careful. The first thing you need to do is some research. Now, the way I do my research is I would come up with a huge spreadsheet, massive list of sales agents, all of the ones from Cannes. You can go on, there's lots of indexes of these you can find. Find this massive list, go through straight away, strike off the ones that aren't relevant, then might be uh, looking at a particular niche that doesn't fit your film so I'd strike off the ones that aren't relevant to you then once you've done that I'd look at who's in charge of acquisitions and I contact them with an email hi Jim here honest filmmaker just made a film here's the trailer here's a poster would you like to watch the full film now it's a numbers game you're gonna have to send a lot of these screening links out there is a Facebook group I'm a member of for um, films trying to find distribution it's a really good one to pick up tips on people not to do business with who've stiffed filmmakers in the past i definitely get on that because that'll give you some information and the good thing about that is if you do find a sales agent you can then mention that on the group and you'll get comments from everybody if anyone's done business with them and if they're a company to avoid or if they're one that actually pays so once you've got a sales agent who is interested in representing your film i would then look at the films that they represent and contact the filmmakers from those films. So I pick some directors and producers of those movies, chuck them a message, you'll be able to find them on Facebook, Twitter, all over the place. Chuck them a message, hi, Jim here, honest filmmaker. You've been dealing with such and such sales agent. How have you found it? Have you got paid? Would you be prepared to do a jump on a quick Zoom with me and talk about the business that you've done with them? From this, you'll very quickly be able to discern if they're worth doing business with, because if the filmmakers had a bad experience, they will not hesitate to tell you. And equally, if they've had a good experience, they'll probably be happy to let you know. Once you've done your research, the next part is really important. And I fall foul for this every single time. So in this situation, remember this is a business deal. So you cannot trust your gut. Never trust your gut, never go with your heart, always go with your head. Now I'm quite a trusting person, so I'm probably the worst person to be in the contract negotiations for a film. However, I'm luckily I'm married to somebody who's quite astute and good at seeing a deal for what it is. So what I'd suggest is always take your contract, take your deal, take the description of your sales agent to a third party or somebody who has got that level headed view who look at it, won't get too attached to it because you might be a year after production desperate to get your film released, you might not be the best person to make a decision about whether a sales agent is right for you or not, because you just might want to get it out there. And there's a game we often play as filmmakers where we go, well, I just want it released. You know, it'd be good for exposure. It'd be good to get it out there because you've got cast and crew. When's the film coming out? How's it coming? It's worth waiting. It's worth slowing your roll, figuring out if you're going to actually make any money out of this deal, because your project, no matter what it is, is worth money to somebody. So you've got to either find the audience, find the distributor, or find the correct sales agent for you. In the past, I've had situations where I totally fell in love with a sales agent. I've listened to the spiel. I've, you know, I've been to a party, they've been there, or I've heard them talk about the films they represent, how passionate they are about my film, how much they love it. And it's easy to get sucked in by that and make a deal based on that feeling you get in here. 
what you need to do is look at the cold hard facts look at the people they've worked with what their experience is like look at the numbers on the piece of paper and look at what they're promising you now the contract again this is not my skill set so luckily i'm married to my producing partner and she is really good at going through contracts with a fine tooth comb and it is definitely worth getting somebody who's happy to do that to take a look if you can't afford uh, legal advice it's definitely worth going through it a couple of things i'd look out for uh, definitely are the term of the contract so you want that to be as short as possible so seven to ten to fifteen years um, there are some companies out there are now doing a contract in perpetuity I've heard the word eternity mentioned in some um, you don't want to sign a contract like that because you don't know where you'll be 10 years from now and you don't know what platforms there'll be or how you can even deliver a film so you want to keep that contract fairly uh, the term of that contract fairly short you also want to make sure the end of that term has a clause that you can get out so most contracts will have something like uh, when the term's up, they get six months or a year to finish up any deals they've got, and then the film comes back to you, but you do have to give them notice on you exiting that contract. It's worth creating a spreadsheet. If you've got a lot of films, or if you've got a lot of projects on the go, it's worth creating a spreadsheet and keeping track of when you sign that contract and when it's till, so that you know if one of your contracts is coming up, you can potentially give notice and start to think about alternative ways of making money out of it. One of the other terms to look out for in a contract is cross collateralization. So this is where your film gets put into a pot with a bunch of other movies and then the payment for that is spread out. You do not want cross collateralization and you don't want to give them the option to cross collateralize your film. Your film is an individual film and should be treated that way. Sales forecasts. OK, so. You've got your film, you're really excited about getting it out there. Then you get this spreadsheet. The spreadsheet's amazing. It's got the best amount you'll get and the worst amount you'll get. And like me, I'm a bright side person. So I'm looking at that positive list going, wow, seeing all those zeros. Wow, this is how much they could potentially get make for my film. Those sales forecasts, unfortunately, you need to look at them and take them with a pinch of salt. Because until you've actually got a deal, until somebody's agreed to pay that money, that's all they are is projections. That's nothing set in stone. Uh, I've had deals before where we've even had to go under the lowest amount they'd offer. Uh, and things change with the market. Things change with the world. That means things aren't as worth as much as they were or they're worth more than you think. So again, take the notice of the sales projections unless you've spoken to a filmmaker who got sales projections and got exactly what they were promised. If you can, and this isn't easy, if you can get upfront money, amazing. Now this might depend on your particular project or if you've got tons and tons of festival bars and someone wants to snap it up, you might get lucky and get some upfront cash. But again, go through that contract with a fine tooth comb and find out where that money's coming from. So if you're getting money, is it coming after sales agent fees have come out? Are they taking that money first? Are you ever going to see any money after that? Because it might be that, you know, you get that big amount up front and just consider that, OK, that's how much I've sold my film for. For the next term, I'll be lucky if I get anything else on top of that. Then there's the legendary sales fees, market fees, sales agent percentages. And unfortunately, when you look at that contract and you see those amounts, they're usually not prepared to negotiate too much on them. That is unfortunately a price you're going to have to pay to go with that particular sales agent. So if you believe you've done your research, you've checked the contract, you're happy, then you've got to appreciate that that's the amount they've got to make before you're going to see a penny. And it's worth thinking about that money waterfall. Who's getting paid first in what order? Because I guarantee you most contracts will be structured so that you'll be the last one in that waterfall. And in most cases, unfortunately, you'll be lucky if you get splashed a little bit with a little bit of cash as the final bits hit the water. One thing I would ask a sales agent is what is your strategy for releasing my film? Who are you going to try? Where are you going to go? Who are you going to speak to? And how are you going to pitch it? Because you want to know that they're going to do some work on it. You're going to want to know that they're going to um, actually promote it and they've got people to pass that project to. So it's really worth looking at their catalogue and how you fit into that. So the other option you've got is dealing direct with distributors. Now, this can be quite tough because you're essentially negotiating and doing the work of a sales agent for your own movie. And that's not easy. Um, and sales agents have already got all these relationships established. So the chances of you cold calling a distributor and managing to get your film released are relatively small. I've done it before myself. It does work if you strike up that uh, relationship with a distributor. 
but what the sales agent protects them from is uh, bad deliverables, is timings, is not very good contracts, all that kind of stuff. So if you're going to deal direct with a distributor, you really need to be professional and you really need to know what your film's worth going into those conversations. Something a distributor might ask for, and it's often in the list of deliverables you need to supply the film with, is e &O insurance. Now, if you don't know, e &O insurance is errors and emissions insurance, and it's insurance to protect whoever releases the film from any kind of litigation. Now, the thing about e &O insurance is it can be quite expensive. On a feature film at the moment, I think you're looking at about three grand. So that's a huge chunk of money, especially if you've made the film on a micro budget, you might not have that money. So if you haven't got e &O insurance, don't panic, you can, Speak to a sales agent when you sign with them and say, I haven't got that. Distributor is going to have to take on that cost or you're going to have to take that cost out of the money the distributor pays us. They might be fine with that. But I'd certainly ask if a sales agent uh, offers to give get you know, insurance for you and take it off the back end, I'd certainly ask to see that certificate to make sure you've paid the right price for it. So just to go through those again, do your research. Never trust your gut. Don't forget the feels. Oh, I really like these people. Don't trust it get somebody level-headed involved, make sure you go through that contract with a fine tooth comb, check out for cross collateralization and the term of your contract, make sure you've got all your deliverables, wave goodbye to those sales fees because they're not coming back, take the sales forecast with a pinch of salt and just be aware of where you sit in that payment schedule and when you potentially get paid. I hope that's helped. Please do follow the Honest Filmmaker podcast. Every week I speak to somebody from a creative industry. So I've talked to sound people, puppeteers, writers, directors, sales agents, all sorts. So do subscribe. It's a great resource for you to understand how these different parts of the industry work. For more advice, tips, tricks, hints, all sorts from people who are in the business and who are working right now, please do subscribe to the Honest Filmmaker podcast.